So he's, Joe's putting out feelers. Um, he goes to the crime scene, the actual crime scene, which is still active and hot. It's crawling with police. But luckily for Joe, John Chen is there. So Chen lets him in and gives him sort of a quickie, surreptitious tour. And this is the first glimpse into Frank's life that Joe's had in 10 years. Seeing this house, seeing this place, seeing the spots on the floor where the bodies were. Uh, Joe continues his search, but late that night, when the crime scene is now closed, it's still active, so it's closed off, but all the police, everyone's gone home. Joe goes back because he wants to get a glimpse of Frank's life, and he wants to see what he's missed for these past 10 years. I'm going to read you two brief excerpts of <coughs> what happens within Frank's house that night. Now remember, it's dark. Um, it's sealed off. The whole area is being patrolled by police, and no one's inside. So Joe breaks in, and he's got a little tiny flashlight so he can look around the house. <coughs> so picture Joe in the darkness. <coughs> the heart-shaped stain where Cindy Meyer and her younger son died was a darker smudge on the dark floor, one murky red over another. Pike studied it for a moment, but Pike wasn't looking for clues. He was looking for Frank. Pike circled the family room, the dining room, and the kitchen, moving as silent as smoke. He noted the furniture, toys, and magazines as if each was a page in the book of the family's life, helping to build their story. A hall led to the master bedroom, which was large and spacious. Photographs of the kids and Frank and Cindy dotted the walls like memories captured in time. An antique desk set opposite a king-sized bed with a padded headboard. A plaque on the desk reading, Empress of the World, Cindy's desk, where she had probably paid bills <clears throat> or helped with the business. Pike played his flashlight over Cindy's desk and saw more snapshots. Frank and the kids, an older couple who might have been Cindy's parents. And then Pike found the picture he was looking for. He had not known he was searching for it, but felt a sense of completion when he saw it. The snapshot showed Frank in a swimming pool with one of the boys. Frank had heaved his son in the air amid a geyser of water, both of them laughing, Frank's arms extended. This picture was the only photograph of all the photos that showed the blocky red arrows inked onto his deltoids pointing forward, just as the arrows on Pike's delts pointed forward, identical. Pike studied the picture for a long while before he returned it to the desk and left the bedroom. Pike did not have a family, so he had no pictures of family on the walls, and he did not keep pictures of his friends. Pike's life had led to blank walls, and now for the first time he wondered if his walls would ever be filled. Joe had to see those arrows for himself. It's one thing for a, a detective in the street to tell him that Frank Meyer had those identical arrows inked, but I think Joe really wanted to see them. He wanted to see if they were identical, if they were exactly like his. <coughs> 